So what are we about to do? It's after the race. We're here to unload the goods or the bads. Not really sure what you want to classify them as. What's left? Ooh, did one fall? Eventually. How do you feel about this thing? Upset. I just can't believe it's this rough. <sighs> I mean, like, how did I hit this many things? I don't remember hitting that much. What'd you do to the buck I made for you? <laughs> look look how much stuff I hit. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the fuel tank. You should see the other side, it's worse. Uh, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't know who did this. I think the neck bearing is broke, look. <laughs> oh yeah, look at the bearing is hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> Look at both the edges. They're just perfectly creased. Would you hit the did that? I didn't do it. I don't know who did it. Not naming names. I told uh, Stan to send it that last a lap and he full sent and it's totaled, I think. So we'll see. We'll see when we get back to the shop. Uh, we jacked with the chain and it got stuck. What are you working on? Front fender. For? Washing machine. Oh, girl. <laughs> <laughs> now this is the uh, 2022 GPS 180 race bike. Just a stock MB200. <laughs> the uh, Megamoto 212 front fender we always use. Scorpion tire. Our new premium front end that we'll be releasing here pretty soon. Got the risers, handlebars, um, tall handlebars, our fuel tank we sell, huh. our new nitrogen shocks, -wee. gold chain. Gotta have the gold chain. Gotta have the gold chain. What's your strategy going into the race? Finish. I'm nervous, you know, they've been telling us, because I haven't rode it either. They've been telling us that uh, it's super rocky. You know, there's a lot of uh, obstacles, I guess, compared to last year, where last year was more of a track, dirt bike track mainly, uh, jumps and stuff. This year, there's like no jumps. It's all trails. It's all rocks. It's all ups and downs. I just hope we don't break nothing and we can finish the race this year and no wrecks. So what was it like driving out the day before the race? Stressful. I was already wore out. We, you know, it had been a hard couple of days. It was like pouring down rain up here at the shop. I was, I was pretty wore out, but you know, that's racing. That's, you know, what it's all about, I guess. That's what we, that's what we do. Paul? Yeah. Is nobody gonna be on this one? I think the bike was still not perfect, but it was 95. It was enough to get out there. So I uh, loaded everything up. I think we had, I think we had 10 of the bikes in my trailer. And uh, so we loaded them all down, headed out, drove by myself out there, had a little hour or so time to just chill. What was it like when you showed up? It was hectic. There's a lot of stuff going on. You know, I was mainly just focused on getting the bikes out because I had other people's bikes in the trailer. So I had to get everybody's stuff out. We got it all unloaded. But about that time is when everyone started running back to the trailer, the camper, and was like, the bike's best up. Hey, so backstory, y'all need to be extra sensitive with Paul today. 
he was up at the shop till 10 because he's the only person with keys to close the shop and everyone kept showing up during the evening time. Then this morning he came in to work on his bike and he worked on everyone else's bike before he finished his. That's the reason why he was out late. Damn. So, so he he's having a rough go and then we just said, hey, your bike is the only bike that fell over. <laughs> It had fallen over in the trailer, I guess. I don't know. I strapped everyone else's down perfectly because no one else's moved, but mine was freaking broke. The whole kickstand and part of the side was messed up. Um, I think the kickstand was pointing forward somehow. Um, I'm not really sure how that happens, but... Junior was there. He took care of it. It's a backwards kickstand! Well, don't f*** off my back, bro! Once I got, you know, got my helmet on, got my suited up, Went out for a couple of rides and stress went away. I was ready to go. You know, the bike handled great. The motor ran perfectly. The track was even better. Um, and then it was dark. We're all getting our sleeping arrangements put together. And then uh, the misfits needed some help on their bike again. And I don't, I don't remember how long we worked on that into the dark, but I guess it was worth it because they got second place, you know, and it was race day the next day and I don't know, your mentality just changes, you know, you get your race mode going. You know, it's time to get on the bike, you know, you hit the trail and there's nothing else to worry about, you just focus on riding. I couldn't have asked for a better event, I just wish we, you know, would have done a little better. It's gonna be a Le Mans style start. You run it, I blow the siren, you get across, get your bike going, take off. If you, if your bike breaks down or you go down or bolt, try to pick up the pieces and scooch over to the side that way you won't get anyone run over. Everybody run a good race and uh, I'm so happy everybody's here. Appreciate it. How was it when you were going to do the number draw and get lined up and set up? A little hectic. I didn't even, couldn't even find the person with the cup, but luckily my teammate did, and we drew number one out of all the numbers. Couldn't believe it. Um, I was for sure we were going to start in the back. That's in my luck, but that's probably why I didn't get the chance to draw. Racers, you know, are you ready? It was just no. dumb luck in the very beginning that would put us in. There were some gnarly rocks out there, and somewhere on that first flat course, there was a big old rock. And of course, everyone's trying to win the first lap. Stan went over a rock, and the rock sheared off the bolts on the bottom of the bike that hold the motor on and the foot pegs all on. And uh, he still finished the lap on there, though, surprisingly. I don't know how. The chain, nothing popped off, but he made it all the way back with I think one tight bolt and two completely missing. So <laughs> I don't know how, but we got it all bolts put back in. We actually welded the, the peg kit to the frame um, in a pinch and um, we finished the race. We didn't have any issues again until the very last lap. We uh, tried squeezing two laps into that last eight minutes and didn't, didn't work. We pushed it way too hard for it to be, you know, that much, that hurt. You know, it was, we were babying it for the most part. You know, we started hearing noise probably halfway through the race of something. We still don't even know what it is. But uh, the last lap put us in. It's, it's pretty well beat up front to back. What was the toughest obstacle on the course? Toughest obstacle, probably that black pipe right across the freaking trail because if you didn't hit it dead square your tire just slipped a little bit and i just started going full speed at it and just hopping as hard as i could over it and it still slipped every time <laughs> anywhere you hit it sucked that was probably the hardest for me everything else it was just learning what path to take how often did you trade out with your partners we traded every lap it seemed practical. Taylor did it last year, and he, 
ended up winning the race and was never tired, you know. Um, it just sounded like a good idea. And uh, so we gave it a shot and it, we were never tired. I still debate if two laps would have been better, but at the end of the day, we had issues from the beginning. So one lap turned out good. We caught up pretty good. We just, you know, we were too far behind to actually catch up and try to compete for first. So what would you keep about this design and what would you change? I'd keep everything and change everything. Overall, you know, we couldn't ask for a better bike. Everything was there. Um, we're slowly evolving the, the MB200 into something that's competitive, race ready, you know, all the bells and whistles you need to compete in something like this and not have any issues. It's all the parts we sell. Every, literally every bolt on part I think we sell or about to sell is on that bike. Um, or was on that bike. Or was, yeah. You know, we let uh, the Misfits ride Gen 1 MB200 and got second place. So, maybe, maybe that's the ticket. <laughs> How did the course live up to your expectations? Better than expected. Overall, it was exactly what everyone wanted from the get-go. Uh, it got a little rough a little bit, but nothing that's we couldn't overcome. What was your experience like? <sighs> Ups and down. What was the toughest part? Uh, getting back on every lap. That was probably the toughest part because it is rough. We've had, what, a hundred bikes ride for three hours on it. There ain't dirt left out there. It's just rocks. We've got a rock quarry out there. Yeah, you hit every single one every time you go by them. Whether it's your chin hitting them or your foot, one of them's getting hit. About to go get me a burger. We got the free food here at the GPS 180. And uh, whether you win, lose, or didn't even try, you get a burger. That's right. <laughs> I'll feed everybody. <laughs> See you next year.